nature delights in number 7 number 7 has an abiding significance in cultures everywhere the seven colors of the rainbow the seven wonders of the world seven continents seven days of the week etc the bible also uses number 7 to represent specific things there are seven medieval arts there are seven ages in the literature of the english language also there are seven ages in a man's life so this number seven means a lot today we are going to see the seven ages of man that is described by william shakespeare in one of his comedies Surely you will be interested in knowing about Shakespeare. So, first let's go through a pictorial biography of William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon. You see his house, the school where he studied, his parents and siblings, Shakespeare's wife and three children. Shakespeare was a great actor. He wrote blockbuster plays like comedies, tragedies, tragic comedies and history plays. He achieved greatness after death. He lives even today through his works which stand the test of time. The poem All the World is a Stage is actually a monologue by Jack, a character in Shakespeare's play As You Like It. It is taken from Act 2, Scene 7. Through Jack, Shakespeare takes the audience on a journey of life the complete life cycle of a human being from birth to death. The monologue is written in free verse, which means no rhyme, no rhyming scheme or no regular pattern is employed. Jack is named Melancholy Jack. His views on life are pessimistic, that is not positive. So we can say the tone of the poem is melancholy. Now, let's analyze the monologue. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. The poem begins with a metaphor and this metaphor is extended further in this poem. The poet describes the world as a stage. The people of the world are players or actors with a specific role to play. Their entrance is birth and exit is death. So in between the birth and the death, he plays many roles, particularly seven different roles or stages. So man plays seven stages in his life. So we find that in the opening lines, the poet has employed metaphor. Now what is a metaphor? It is a figure of speech that describes an action or object is another thing. Not because it is the same, but for the sake of comparison. Now look at this. The world is compared to a stage. Then men and women are compared to actors. So while comparing, the prepositions like or as is not employed by the poet. So the figure of speech here is metaphor. If the prepositions as and like are made use of while comparing, we call it a simile. So man's lifespan is divided into seven periods of time. It is called the seven ages. At first the infant, 
mewling and puking in the nurse's arms so naturally the first stage of man is infancy so the infant does nothing more than mewling and puking now what is mewling it is a small weak noise that the cat makes now you can listen to that so the infant is mewling and puking what do you mean by puking puking means being sick and vomiting so the characteristics of the infant stages are crying and vomiting so now why does the child cry don't cry whenever the child is hungry or sick or wet or sometimes if it is frightened it cries the only language he knows is crying which he makes use of to attract the attention of others it also vomits if it takes milk in excess so the first stage mentioned is the infant stage and two characteristics pointed out are mewling and puking that is crying and vomiting in the nurse's arms so the child vomits in the nurse's arm it is said so usually nurses are allowed to take care of the children uh, it depends upon the level of aristocracy in ordinary families uh, mothers take care of the children so here the infant's helplessness and dependency is portrayed so the first stage of man's life is infancy then the whining school boy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail unwilling to school so the second stage is that of a school boy he has a shining morning face it signifies vitality is he willing to go to school no how is he described he is whining whining means making a long cry or a sound so it suggests that he is not interested in going to school so whining school boy with his satchel what is satchel it is a shoulder bag the children use use to carry books to school so now how does he move creeping like snail so he is walking very slowly like a snail he is moving at a slow pace have you seen a snail's movement just watch how does it move it moves very slowly now who is moving like a snail the school boy so there is a comparison that the poet has made use of here that is creeping like snail so you find that the movement of the boy is compared to the movement of the snail and there is a preposition like that is being made use of so the figure of speech here is simile in the second stage the formal education starts but the school boy is not entirely happy to go to school and then the lover sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow in the third stage man becomes a romantic lover what does the lover do he is sighing like a furnace now what is sighing sighing means emitting a long deep audible breath okay so why is the lover sighing maybe because his love is not successful and he is sighing like a furnace now look at the picture the furnace is a fireplace it denotes the feeling of the passionate lover how hot he is because he is in love so what does the lover do next 
he composes a woeful ballad woeful means unhappy or sad ballad is a song so he composes a song celebrating the beauty of his lady love the song he writes is about the lover's eyebrow then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard jealous in honor sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth so before reaching this stage that is the fourth stage man has already crossed three stages from an infant he enters the childhood stage and then in his teen age or in the adolescent age uh, he becomes a lover and now he is a man that is a soldier now he is in the fourth stage so he is full of strange oaths oaths means promises so he is willing to swear or promise to do a lot of things and bearded like the pard so bearded like so there is a simile employed by the poet here the soldier's beard is like a pard pard stands for the leopard so the comparison is between the soldier's beard and the beard of the leopard so the leopard um, doesn't have a long beard like that we can say that uh, the man is fierce like a leopard and then he is jealous in honor so he takes great care of his honor so honor the h spelling is silent so you have to pronounce it as honor his reputation or fame that is meant by honor that is he is eager to get honor name and fame sudden and quick in quarrel so he is easily provoked he picks up quarrel at any time and it is unpredictable sudden means unpredictable in any argument he may suddenly become violent seeking the bubble reputation you would have seen bubbles they don't last long they break very easily a bubble is empty so the soldier is ready to do anything for the sake of this empty glory that is the reputation that is short lived even in the cannon's mouth cannon is a large gun you can see here the soldier is ready to stand even in front of the cannon if he is going to get a good name or a reputation he is ready to risk his life to get name and fame and then the justice in fair round belly with good cape on lined with eyes severe and beard of formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances justice is the fifth stage of man justice stands for a respected middle aged man and then the justice in fair round belly here the physical appearance of the person is described he has developed a big round belly how did he get this with good capon lined capon is chicken so capon lined means his belly is lined with excess fat which is the result of eating chicken that is he has accepted bribes and has eaten a lot he has fed himself well the result is he has got a big round belly with eyes severe what about his eyes he has serious eyes and beard of formal cut his beard is neatly trimmed full of wise saws saws means saying so proverbs and modern instances modern instances means 
current affairs so the judge quotes many proverbs and anecdotes so in this stage man grows older with maturity and wisdom the sixth age shifts into lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side his youthful horse well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank so the sixth age is the pantaloon stage okay so lean means very thin slippered pantaloon means the man is wearing slippers pantaloon is a funny old man okay so in this stage man becomes old man grows thin in stature with spectacles on nose and pouch on side so his eyesight begins to fail so he needs spectacles to see clearly he keeps his money in a pouch that is a bag that hangs from his shoulder the hard earned money is preserved there in the bag so he carries a bag and his youthful horse horse is stocking socks or tights youthful horse means the stockings or the tights that he had or he used when he was young that is well saved he had kept it safe for future use and now it is a world too wide so this dress or the stockings that he has preserved for later use doesn't fit properly it is loose now for his shrunk shank why is it loose because his body has shrunk it has become smaller and thin and shank is a piece of meat that is cut from the leg of animals here it refers to the fact that the fleshy leg or the thigh part that was very fleshy earlier has now shrunk it has become lean and thin so the idea conveyed here is man becomes very lean in his old age the stockings and the tights that he wore when he was in his youth no longer fits him now they are very loose for his leg which has shriveled or shrunk and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound now what about his voice his manly voice that he had earlier manly voice means man's loud clear voice which he had has now turned into it has changed into childish treble treble is a high pitched sound resembling a boy's voice and pipes pipes means once again high sound so the harsh rough masculine voice is changed now into the voice of a boy or a child and whistles in his sound so the sound that is heard when a person without teeth speaks that uh, whistling sound is heard while he is speaking so in this stage the old man loses many of his manly traits he used to possess and the childish characteristics appear once again the last scene of all that ends the strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything so the last stage is very old age and with this age the life history of man the life cycle comes to an end and this stage is described as second childishness so man plays seven roles in his lifetime 
the last one is second childishness the main characteristics of this age is oblivion what do you mean by oblivion forgetfulness he doesn't know what is happening around him so sans teeth so in this old age man loses his teeth sans eyes eyesight fails sans taste he has no sense of taste or smell sans everything so he loses everything in his life and finally he dies so man in the last stage loses everything and exists from this world so just as the drama comes to an end our life also comes to an end with our death thus shakespeare has skillfully brought out the parallels between the life of man and the actors on the stage this monologue is my favorite monologue it is the favorite of examiners too so definitely questions will be asked from here and you have to learn this thoroughly so make it your favorite monologue too what is the message conveyed in this monologue our life in this world is temporary that is short lived if we perform our different roles excellently well we will get a good outcome so we have to patiently go through the stages and make our life meaningful